Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is another progress raw video um, and I want to show you how I got to the final um, video I posted a few days ago. If you haven't had a chance to see this video, I'm going to post it um, above. And uh, today I'm going to show you um, how I worked with the files. I'm quite happy with the result, I have to say, because um, I didn't have to do a lot of work to get to these final images and that's for me one of the main advantages of ProRes RAW that it comes out of the camera in such a way that I don't need to tinker around a lot with the files. So obviously since uh, ProRes RAW is available for the Nikon Z6 uh, I learned a lot about color spaces, about handling the files in a correct way in Final Cut Pro and also working and exposure um, so working with the files and um, to expose them correctly and I want to share this knowledge with you in this video and also show you in Final Cut Pro how I um, work with the files. So um, it, as, as it turns out there are many ways that are um, shown in the internet how to work with these files and um, I did it until now in a way that is obviously not the correct way. Um, until now I'm generating a wide gamut library, import the files and, and then work with the files in um, a REC 709 project. Um, and when I import the files they are completely, so they seem to be completely overexposed but this is just the way Final Cut Pro displays um, the files um, in a REC 709 color space. What I then do is to lower highlights and shadows and play around with the midtones um, until I get a final result. Um, the correct way would be to import the files. Normally, when you import raw footage into Final Cut Pro 10, Final Cut recognizes that it's a raw file and automatically applies um, a raw to lock conversion based on the camera you are using. And there are several um, raw to lock conversion tables already um, in Final Cut Pro for ARRI or for Sony or for Blackmagic. Um, but there is no raw to lock conversion for Nikon until now and I hope that Apple will deliver it in uh, one of the, uh, the next Final Cut updates. So some su suggested that um, the Sony S-Log raw to um, lock conversion is a good way to start and I also tried this but um, the problem is that there is so that of course it's not the correct conversion and when you then apply the Nikon lock to Rec7 online LUT um, I'm not able to produce the same results as if I worked with the files directly without any conversion. In fact Apple also has a support document and tells you how to work with ProRes RAW files in Final Cut Pro and they say you can either apply um, one of the preloaded RAW to lock conversions, you can use your own RAW to lock conversion LUT or you can work with the files directly. The problem when you work with files directly is that you are working in a linear color space and when you, um, yeah, so because it's linear when you um, lower for example the highlights you automatically also affect the midtones and the shadows in a way that would not happen if you would work in uh, the correct non-linear color space. So I decided to do it anyway because um, at the moment um, the results I get are um, better with um, working with the files directly um, but in the future I will for sure use a raw to lock conversion once Nikon or Apple um, yeah, give it to us. So I think we should go into Final Cut Pro now and then I will show you um, how I worked on some of the footage you saw in the video I posted. We are in Final Cut Pro 10 and as you can see this library is in white gamut. But as I told you, it's not necessary to do this. You can also work with a standard dynamic range library because we are delivering in Rec 709. And then I have a project. And this project um, I set to 2 to 1 aspect ratio. And 
this is the project is in standard rec 709 color space and then i imported all the files and um, this is how the files look when you import them um, as you can see they look quite horrible and you need to to work with them in order to get a final result that looks like this here um, what I will do is to import some of the files to show you um, yeah, how to work with them. When you um, add one of the ProRes RAW files to the Rec709 project, you um, get a warning that you are adding an HDR clip to an SDR project and that some um, yeah, parts of the image will be cut off. That is, uh, that is normal and this is exactly what you see here that the highlights are cut off so and then what i do is to um this is saturation so i go to the clip and then i lower the highlights and then lower the shadows and then yeah adjust the midtones in a way that is suitable and when yeah then the image looks like this so as you can see it's, it's it's really quite easy to work with the files and there's also quite a lot of latitude when you um, adjust shadows and highlights and midtones and this is also one um, advantage of ProRes RAW that there is so much latitude in the files so this is the way I did it until now there is the correct way and um, I will also show you this when you go into the inspector tab then um, under general you have this raw to lock conversion and you have cam camera LUT um, with ProRes RAW from the Nikon Z6 there is nothing filled out here because there is simply no raw to lock conversion LUT when you open this you can see there's one from Canon, from DJI, Panasonic, Sony, um, and people said that this Sony S Log 3 2 and uh, S Gamut 3 would be a, a good way to start. And of course, I need to reset my adjustments. And then, um, yeah, the image looks like this. So this, um, yeah, more, more or less resembles then a lock image. And then you would need to add a LUT. And this is in the effects browser, custom LUT. And for this, I'm choosing the Nikon Z6 3D LUT. And um, change output to Rec 709 and input to Rec 2020 HLG. And then you get an image that looks like this. So we can toggle this on and off. So this is the raw to lock conversion and this is the um, lock to Rec 709 conversion. And with this, you are now in the correct color space and you can start to work um, with the image like you normally would um, and adjust the settings like you want to. And by this, you also get, yeah, Kind of the same image like before but in the correct color space and that's and the better way to start especially if you want to um, to do further grading of the image you can add some saturation and also now i'm quite um, quite happy with the image um, some of you asked in the comments um, especially how um, the footage channels with um, yeah blue skies um, high dynamic range and stuff and also, I'm also quite happy with um, with the way the footage looks. So this is um, yeah, a blue sky, river, some greens, golden hour sunshine um, example. And so here, and disclaimer that again the not correct way. And you can see you can really get some great detail and color in the in the sky and there is yeah some latitude you can work with and also you can see how the sky changes if i 
raise the highlight so in this case this is probably a, a point where I would stop with um, pulling down highlights because anymore the whole image gets dark and this is also because of the linear um, color space we are working in it's also the reason why you should convert raw to lock first but you can then lower the shadows do something with the mids ah, and then you get an image like this and the end uh, you can also raise the, the the highlights so this is more or less just playing around and see um, how you get to an image you like and so this there is um, yeah no changes to the colors I just uh, um, adjusted exposure and as you can see or at least I would say that this is already a very pleasing image with good colors here the reds and the greens the blue of the sky I'm really 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 happy with this um, another example so this is the castle in Düsseldorf Benrath so very nice and old castle um, this is also good because blue sky um, some sun going down here and uh, also the the building is quite colorful so let's edit and again the warning at some point in time I'll need to shut this warning off and again here lower highlights now the image looks kind of flat because there is a lot of room for the um, shadows to come down you could also start to pull down shadows first and don't overdo it because just try to remember how the scene looked there is no real black in the scene so there is no need to pull the shadows down completely and then in the end you can again raise the highlight so that you use the available latitude from 0 to 100 and then in the end you can play around with um, with the midtones and I think this would be a good image and then yeah you can always play around with saturation comic look <laughs> yeah nice yeah for example like this and one last scene mm. sorry I need to do the laundry <laughs> that's the um, reminder perhaps this yeah so the sun was going down here or here so this is pretty blown out and remember it's it's not it's not recorded like this this is just the way Final Cut Pro displays it and here you can see an example where really um, this is the fl is a flat line and this is this part of the image show this was um, recorded overexposed and, and as you can see you cannot really bring it back I mean you can bring it back to to a point where there are some details in this in the trees but you cannot rescue a shot like this but um, here I wanted to expose for the foreground and that's why the final image is looking like this and this is also okay because um, it's okay that this part of the scene is blown out you can also see highlight roll off in this example so let me enlarge and I for my taste it, it, it's quite a nice roll off because there is no subtle change in exposure exposure also not in colors there's no banding and you can see that there is a really nice gradient so I would say highlight roll off is quite good if you don't overdo it okay that was my video about my Final Cut Pro 10 ProRes RAW workflow 
And I hope um, yeah, I gave you some valuable information. If you have any questions regarding Nikon Z6 ProRes RAW, Final Cut Pro, Workflow and so on, just post them below in the comments. I will get back to you and um, hope to see you when, in one of my next videos. Until then, see you.